Welcome back to Plowman's Backyard and today we are out in the garden planting our garlic. Thought it's a great time. It's October, mid-October I guess, and it's calling for cooler temperatures which is going to be perfect for the garlic because we want it to remain dormant for the winter. And today I've got three different types of garlic I'm planting. One of the garlic is music, which is, this is the exact stuff I planted last year. We used half of it for our pickles this year, and I saved the other half um, for, for growing for next season. The reason why I did that is because I'm increasing my yields. So I know that I'm not gonna have garlic over the winter this year, but it's gonna pay off in the future because I'm just gonna keep increasing my garlic um, yields and not spending as much money. So I've got about half of these left from last year. The other kind I have is Mennonite garlic. And I picked up actually um, two pounds of Mennonite garlic. You can see how big these things are. They're fantastic. They're really strong flavor. And again, I'm only planting um, hard neck garlic. So I'm planting two pounds of this as well. I just got it this year. So I'm hoping to increase my yields of these every year. And there's quite a bit in the bag actually. And the other one that I have here, another large variety of hard neck garlic is a Siberian garlic. I don't know if you can see it again, huge. And I got two pounds of this as well. So I'm gonna have lots of garlic next season for lots of pickles. Hopefully we'll have some for over the winter and still have at least half of the amount to plant for next year. So every year I can increase my yields. Let's get into how you plant your garlic. So you wanna plant your garlic if you're in colder climates like we are, zoned, uh, you know, three some years, but mostly a zone four up in Canada and we have hard winters, you want to make sure that you plant your hard neck garlic. Soft neck garlic will not grow well up here. For those of you who don't know what hard neck garlic is, there's a stem here just in the middle of the two garlic cloves. I think you can see that. That is what they're referring to with a hard neck garlic. It is very hard. I'll take it out so you can see it. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just taking it out. This is what they call a hard neck garlic. So it's hard, you can't bend it, it's tough. And these hard neck garlic are what you need for colder climates. So if you are, you know, in a warmer climate that doesn't get um, a hard winter or maybe no winter at all, you can plant a soft neck garlic. But we up here need to plant hard necks. And the difference is other than the neck part being hard or soft, is that typically a hard neck garlic um, only has about, on average, about four to seven cloves per garlic bulb. Um, whereas a soft neck, instead of having this hard neck here, it'll have inner bulbs. So you're gonna get a lot more bulbs with a soft neck than you would a hard neck. But um, they're still the same, it's still garlic, they taste the same, it's not a big deal. You have different varieties, but essentially that's what we're planting. So when to plant your garlic? Um, like I said, uh, up here in our colder climates, up here in Canada, we tend to plant our garlic in the fall. So usually mid to late October or early November, depending on when the snow is actually coming, because you want to get it in the ground before the snow comes. Uh, if you don't really have a winter, if you have like you know, really mild winters, you could probably get away with planting it in the spring because you'll have a longer growing season. But here we plant in the fall. So this is the perfect time to plant. So the other thing a lot of people ask is how do I know which end to plant? You want to put the pointy end facing up to the sun and this bottom here, you can see it there. The bottom is the root. That's where the roots are gonna come from. So you want that planted down. The next thing is, how do I know how deep to plant my garlic? In general, you want to put, you want to plant your garlic about a finger's length deep. So just put your finger in. That's what I do anyway. It's the best way to do it. And put your garlic bulb in. And in general, also, you want to plant and space your garlic about a hand's length apart. You want to give the garlic enough room to grow. Um, if you plant them too close together, they won't grow as big, but also um, it's going to take the nutrients away from the next closest garlic. So you want them to be far enough away that they have the nutrients they need. Another thing you want to make sure is, 
is that your ground is nice and soft and fluffy so that your garlic really do have a chance to grow. So I am just gonna start my first row now, planting my Mennonite garlic. Like I said, I'm start probably around here. I'll plant them facing up. You want them to be about a hand width apart. So my next one's gonna go about here. So I just got done planting my uh, Mennonite garlic just in this patch here and I divided it off with a log or a couple little logs. This here I planted my Siberian garlic here and again used another log to divide. And then here I planted my music which are my seeds from last year's, um, well technically this year's harvest. And now what I'm going to do is I bought some... I bought some straw and now I'm just going to lay that down to cover it up after I cover up all the holes. All right, so we have went to um, the feed supply store where we get our chicken feed and purchased a bale of straw, um, just a square bale. And we've used this for our potatoes, um, carrots, root vegetables for storage, but we also are using it to cover our garlic for the winter. Today we are looking at my garlic, which has now, I don't know if you can see it, but it has gone to scapes. What scapes are is the hard neck variety of garlic always tends to go to scapes and you won't get that with the soft neck garlic. This right here is where you'll get your seeds. So essentially what's happening is that it's sending, the garlic is sending off shoots so that it goes to seed and you could collect seeds. But if you do not want the seeds and you just keep the garlic cloves itself and replant those year after year, you don't need the seeds. So what a lot of people do or what a lot of people miss is not harvesting their scapes. They're actually really good. Um, they have a lot of flavor. Um, they can be used in place of things like scallions and uh, chives. So anything that you would add chives to or like green onions, you can add scapes to. And you're gonna get the garlicky flavor instead of an oniony flavor. You can actually make pestos out of them. You can dehydrate them. There's a lot of uses, fry them up. Whatever you would use a garlic for, you can use escapes for. So scapes come when the weather is a bit warmer um, and because it has warmed up in the last week the scapes have just come on but they don't last long so you want to pick your scapes when they're quite young and you can see by this one here uh, it's got a bit of a curl this is a young scape that is going to be probably the nicest texture to use for your scapes then you're going to get into the more mature scapes and the more mature scapes are actually more fibrous and they're not as nice to eat. So the young scape here, um, it has a more of a curl to it and it is a lot nicer to eat. And then you're going to get into mature scape. And the difference is you can see that it's got a bit of a curl, but it straightens out. So this is a... Um, it's been here a little bit longer and the straightness of the scape is letting us know that it's a bit more fibrous. So it's gone a little bit too far. I will pick it because I do not want the garlic to go to seed. I want all of that energy down in the bulb, but this is essentially what we're wanting to use for a nice young scape. So basically we know um, when scapes come, one, because it's a lot warmer weather, the scapes will develop and they want to shoot out some seeds from the garlic. And like I said, this only comes on the hard neck um, garlic varieties and not the soft neck. We also know that the scapes, when the scapes come, it's usually about a month before it's time to harvest the garlic. 
So now that the scapes are here, we know that we've got anywhere from about three to four weeks and it's going to be garlic harvest time. So that's another indicator. Also that the tips are growing brown. It's letting us know that the garlic is almost ready. There's a couple indicators here that says it's almost time to pick that garlic. Harvesting this, the scapes is actually really simple. You could break them off, you could pull them off, or you could cut them off. So I have picked a bunch of scapes. I still have some more to pick, so I won't keep you around for that. But the smell of these things, like it's it's like just eating garlic. They're wonderful. So if you have garlic and you notice these coming up, pick them and use them. You can use them in soups. You can use them in stir fries. Anything at all that you use scallions, green onions for, or garlic for, you can use the scapes for as well. Now this year's garlic is going to be a little bit different because it has been so wet that I've waited this long. It is, I think, around the maybe 26th of July. Usually I harvest this around the 10th of July, uh, within the first two weeks of July. It has been so wet and rainy that I have been trying to let this garlic patch dry out. The challenge is it's been raining pretty much every day, if not every other day. So we've had about two days of no rain and it's supposed to get rain tonight. So I really want to harvest this today. Um, first steps, I'll just do a couple quick tips. Um, so you want to do it um, in July within the first two weeks of July typically. So I am a bit late. But the next thing you want to look for is you want the tips to be browning. You can see here um, there's lots of different browning going on. And what you really want to look for um, when you're harvesting your garlic is basically garlic cloves and bulbs have layers, much like an onion. And the, all these green stems or leaves that you see on the garlic plant itself, each of those re represent a layer of the outside of your bulb. So essentially what you're wanting is the browning to happen on each layer of the bulb, which indicates that your layers on your bulb are developed and ready to be cured. So if they're not browning, those you really need those layers on the garlic bulb in order to properly dry out your garlic. So once you harvest your garlic, it does need to be cured and dried out if you're wanting to store it for long-term use. Another tip that I do when I do harvest my garlic, um, you got to be really careful and not um, dig too close to the plant itself because you could pierce the garlic itself and you don't want to do that. The other thing is when you're cur curing your garlic, what I like to do when I'm harvesting it for next year's crop, you want to save a minimum of about 40% of your garlic. You could do a bit less, you could even do a bit more, but I find about 40% of what I harvest here is what I'm going to plant for next year. And that's how we kind of become self-sustainable in planting our garlic. So what I have here, I've got three different varieties, all hardneck um, varieties. They're great for these northern climates. Um, and the other thing is about this tiny little patch here is about $80 worth of garlic. So if I do not have to spend that every year, I'm saving myself money, but I'm also um, using um, bigger bulbs to plant next year because each year these bulbs are going to grow larger and larger if you continue to use those same bulbs. So um, let's get into harvesting the garlic seeing what I have here. I'm really hoping um, that they have had time to dry out. I'm a little nervous. Um, it is later than what I expected and there's been so much rain. But these are some of the challenges we come across when we're trying to grow our own food for our family. Every year is different and we have to be able to adapt easily. So let's get seeing how much garlic we can actually use from the small patch that I have here. So this here is the Mennonite garlic that I grew. Um, I did purchase this uh, last fall and you can actually really tell this is the Mennonite garlic. I did divide it so I know which ones are, but the smell is so strong with this garlic. Now I'm just going to show you up close how big um, this garlic really is. So these are a large hard neck variety garlic. This has a very strong um, flavor. It is a Mennonite garlic and it is phenomenal. So about um, just to give you an idea, I am going to be saving about 40% of my harvest to plant for next, actually for this fall for next season. And three of these bulbs actually go for about $25 um, for three of these. So you can just imagine how much money you're saving by growing the, your own food and um, saving some for the following year. So um, getting more independent on your gardening is the way to go. And as you can see, $25 for three really does add up considering the harvest that I got just off of this one variety of garlic.
This here is my second variety of garlic that I grew. This is actually Siberian garlic. It also is a hard neck garlic and it is a more larger variety of a garlic. And when I pulled these out, they didn't have the strong smell that the Mennonite garlic had. So these do not have a very strong flavor compared to the Mennonite, but are still a really large variety. And again, about three of these go for about $25. And so you can see here with the amount that I've got harvest, um, we're saving a lot of money. Putting your money into garlic is a really good way to go if you use a lot of garlic and um, you can actually really save a lot. So growing garlic is definitely on the must too and it is super easy to grow. So lastly here, this is actually the music variety. It is also a hard neck garlic. However, um, they are a lot smaller and the harvest wasn't as great with these. Um, still a really nice garlic to have. Now these I did purchase last year. I got about, I think two pounds for about $30 online at um, I believe I got them from West Coast Seeds actually. I'll leave a link in the description below um, where you can get this specific variety of garlic and I'll try and leave a link in the description below where you can get the other garlics as well. This is a pretty common garlic. Um, you can get it just about anywhere. The other two are more of a specialty garlic. Now I will tell you that all these varieties are organic. These are actually last year's harvest. I saved about 50% of these just to plant um, again for this year. So this is the benefit of being able to grow your own. As you can see, they are a bit smaller. So when you are saving your own garlic, you do want to pick the largest garlic to plant and the nicest looking and you'll get some good garlic. But um, anyways, it's a smaller harvest for those, but they didn't cost me anything this year. So that was just a blessing. Well, that's it for this year's harvest. As you can see, we got a good selection, a good variety of garlic. I wanna encourage you to take the time to get some garlic. Now, the next step to doing your garlic is now it's time to cure it. So you wanna put it in a nice dry place. I usually use racks. Um, basically where I start my plants and things like that, I use those racks to dry my garlic. And I had a great success last year in doing that. You just wanna pick a nice dry place to, for your garlic to cure. And what I'm talking about is curing is you want all these layers on the um, bulb itself that they all actually need to completely dry out to be able to store your garlic for the winter use. Now I like I said I'm going to be saving about 40% of this year's harvest. I'm going to plant it in the fall again and the rest of it I'm actually going to be using for my pickles and throughout the winter on different things like soup and whatever else we like to use garlic in.